So I want to walk you through the monthly savings chart now. So this is just really simple. You know, we can sort of look at our buckets today and what our savings portion today actually is. Uh, But when we talk about making future purchases and, you know, changes to passive income and all those sorts of things, you know, what happens to our savings per month throughout those periods? So it's all well and good to see our passive income come up and down over time. But what impact does that have on the savings month on month? And are we okay with that impact moving forward. Um, So we've got our monthly savings chart here. Um, The dotted line here is just this um, current monthly savings. So it's this this number that we see up in the savings here, which in this scenario is um, 6,200 per month. And then we can see, um, well, we've got another purchase this year. And if we do that purchase based on um, the income and the yields and everything else that we stated for that purchase, our monthly savings is actually going to come down to 5.5 compared to 6.2 where we are today. Um, over the next couple of years, we actually get back above that line. Um, and then we drop down, you know, we go from 6.3 down to 4,500 here. And um, if we look at what the reasoning of that might be, it, we can see here that we're switching over to P&I in 2025. Uh, we can see that our passive income comes from 11,000 per annum down to 11, negative 11,000. Um, and then, you know, we can see the extremes with our interest rate movements here as well. And we can see how that impacts our month on month cash from that point in time. Then if we delve a little bit further, we can see that this does increase and come up over time. And then as we start to eliminate that debt in those later stages of life, um, this is where our monthly savings starts to really tick up over time. Now, obviously, this has does have an impact with inflation and wage growth over time. Um, so these numbers will be factoring into these later years down the line. Um, but you can really see, you know, we're sort of hitting those passive income targets of, you know, 150k odd uh, a surplus on top of the current savings that you have today that's when you're hitting those really high saving goals and obviously that's at the retirement stage of life so um, your savings from your income would change at that point in time too but obviously that's when you come into the platform and make those decisions but if you were to remain in your current job uh, inflation adjusted and wage growth adjusted um, on in combination with the additional passive income that you'll be getting from the portfolio, these are the sorts of numbers that you're pot- potentially saving down the line. Uh, and this is really handy just to sort of see the worst case scenario. You know, if we chuck in another purchase here in 2025, you know, another million dollar purchase for the worst case scenario. Um, let's say that it's a principal place of residence and we're not getting any yield on it. So we really want to see, you know, a big impact of a P&I purchase. Um, we can see here that we've got enough equity to do so, borrowable equity. Our savings is actually coming up because we're extracting equity from the portfolio. However, what it does do is takes our passive income down to around 80K per annum. Um, and then, um, you know, worst case, it's 119 if the interest rates were to increase by 2% at that point. Uh, but in terms of the savings, you know, we go from positive 6.3 down to negative 1.1. And we're actually negative for a good you know, from 2027 to 2033 here for six years, we're negative on our savings. So, you know, obviously that situation isn't 100% sustainable. If I do look at our savings though, over that time horizon, you know, we are, you know, our saving gets to a 360K and then we we start to move down year on year on there. Um, We get down to, you know, a bottom of 165 at the very bottom. Um, you know, so we're actually spending 150k rather than saving any money in between that period. So, you know, if a, if, a, if a large expense comes up or something scary comes up, you know, you're in a you're in a bad position there. Um, so the portfolio is actually going to be costing you savings, and you just you're living on previous savings that you've had. So, based on your risk profile, that might not be a scenario that you're comfortable with. Um, so it's really good just to understand, you know, if we were to bring that principal place of residence spend back to say 700,000, well, that might be 7 million, um, 700,000, um, we can see now that our savings gets up to a hundred dollars and then, you know, a couple of months after that, we start to save a little bit more. So, you know, really good to understand, okay, well, not comfortable with going negative savings for a few years and digging into my actual historical savings, um, much rather stay positive you probably want to stay a little bit more positive for that and you know it might take you you having to sell one of the existing properties to be able to have a sustainable savings per month or maybe your income's increased from then Uh, who knows to know the exact situation but yeah 
Um, or you could decide, okay, this is a, this is a little bit more comfortable. Let's not go P and I in that year. Uh, let's keep the repayments interest only, and then okay, well, we only go down to four point one. So that's not as scary. Um, you just got to factor in the, that you are going to roll over to P and I at some point in time. You know, let's say that we rolled over a P and I five years later after that that date. Uh, we're going to come in here in twenty thirty. Uh, we're going to switch to P and I, uh, and then. You know, we can say, okay, well, our monthly savings, the worst case scenario, gets down to about two thousand dollars, where our passive income is nearly about negative fifty grand. Um, so, really good just to map out those scenarios. You kind of want to make sure that you're positive, in positive territory with those monthly savings, to just to make sure that you're going not going negative. Um, obviously, if you had a ridiculous amount of savings and that was something that you were comfortable with, you can sort of map that out. But yeah, really want to play with those different scenarios. But yeah, that's how the uh, the monthly saving charts work.